Bernard Le Beauvier de Fontenelle, also called Bernard Le Beauvier de Fontenelle, was a French author and an influential member of three of the academies of the Institut de France, noted especially for his accessible treatment of scientific topics during the unfolding of the Age of Enlightenment biography. Fontenelle was born in Rouen, France and died in Paris just one month before his 100th birthday. His mother was the sister of great French dramatists Pierre and Thomas Cornet. His father, François Le Beauvier de Fontenelle, was a lawyer who worked in the provincial court of Rouen and came from a family of lawyers from Alonson. He trained in the law but gave up after one case, devoting his life to writing about philosophers and scientists, especially defending the Cartesian tradition. In spite of the undoubted merit and value of his writings, both to the laity and the scientific community, there is no question of his being a primary contributor to the field. He was a commentator and explicator and occasionally a passionate, though generally good-humoured, controversialist. He was educated at the College of the Jesuits, the Lycée Pierre Cour until 1873, about 200 years later. At the Lycée he showed a preference for literature and distinguished himself. Early work. He began as a poet, writing a poem in Latin at the age of 13 and more than once competed for prizes of the Académie Française, but he never won anything. He visited Paris from time to time and became friendly with the Abbé de Saint-Pierre, the Abbé Vertet and the mathematician Pierre Verignon. He witnessed, in 1680, the total failure of his tragedy Asper. Fontenelle afterwards acknowledged the public verdict by burning his unfortunate drama, his opera of Tetis Ape Acute Elio Cuti, 1689, though highly praised by Voltaire, was not much better, and it may be significant that none of his dramatic works are still performed. His poesies pastorales are also mediocre, his Lettre Galantes du Chevalier d'Air published anonymously in 1685, was a collection of letters portraying worldly society of the time. It immediately made its mark. In 1686 his famous allegory of Rome and Geneva, slightly disguised as the rival princesses Mario and Inegu, in the relation de la Lille de Borneo, gave proof of his daring in religious matters. But it was by his nouveau dialogues des morts that Fontenelle established a genuine claim to high literary rank, and that claim was enhanced three years later by what has been summarized as the most influential work on the plurality of worlds in the period, Intritions sur la pluralité des mondes. He wrote extensively on the nature of the universe, Behold a universe so immense that I am lost in it. I no longer know where I am. I am just nothing at all. Our world is terrifying in its insignificance. Later work. Fontenelle had made his home in Rouen, but in 1687 he moved to Paris, and in the same year he published his Histoire des Oracles, a book which made a considerable stir in theological and philosophical circles. It consisted of two essays, the first of which was designed to prove that oracles were not given by the supernatural agency of demons, and the second that they did not cease with the birth of Jesus. It excited the suspicion of the church, and a Jesuit by name Jean-Francois Baltus, published a ponderous refutation of it, but the peace-loving disposition of its author impelled him to leave his opponent unanswered. To the following year belongs his digression sur les anciens et les moderns, in which he took the modern side in the controversy then raging his doute sur le système physique des causes occasionals appeared short 
shortly. Afterwards, he remained influential in his older years and when a then unknown Jean-Jacques Rousseau met him in 1742, when Fontenelle was 85, he passed on the advice he gave all young writers that came to him, you must courageously offer your brow to laurel wreaths and your nose to blows. A noted gourmand, he attributed his longevity to eating strawberries. At 92 one woman wrote that he was as lively as a man of 22. When in his late 90s he met the beautiful Madame Helvetius, he reportedly told her, Ah Madame, if only I were 80 again, member of the French Academy. In 1691 he was received into the French Academy in spite of the determined efforts of the partisans of the ancients, especially Racine and Boileau, who on four previous occasions had ensured his rejection. He was thus a member both of the Academy of Inscriptions and of the Academy of Sciences, and in 1697 he became perpetual secretary to the latter, an office he held for 42 years, and it was in this official capacity that he wrote the Histoire du Renouvellement de l'Académie des Sciences, containing extracts and analyses of the proceedings, and also the elegies of the members, written with great simplicity and delicacy. Perhaps the best known of his elegies, of which there are 69 in all, is that of his uncle Pierre Cornet. This was first printed in the Nouvelles de la République des Lettres and as Vie de Cornet, was included in all the editions of Fontenelle's Uvis. The other important works of Fontenelle are his Elements de la Géométrie de l'Infini and his Terre des Tourbillons. In the latter he supported the views of René Descartes concerning gravitation, material that by that time he had effectively been superseded by the work of Isaac Newton. He is noted for the accessibility of his work, particularly its novelistic style. This allowed non-scientists to appreciate scientific development in a time where this was unusual, and scientists to benefit from the thoughts of the greater society. If his writing is often seen as trying to popularize the astronomical theories of Descartes, whose greatest exponent he is sometimes considered. It also appealed to the literate society of the day to become more involved in natural philosophy, thus enriching the work of early Enlightenment scientists. In spite of the inarguable value and quality of his writings, he had no serious pretensions to original scientific mathematical work but did not let that stop him from outspoken support for Descartes' proposed conceptions of the roles of vortices in physics. Legacy Fontenelle was a popular figure in the educated French society of his period, holding a position of esteem comparable only to that of Voltaire. Unlike Voltaire however, Fontenelle avoided making important enemies. He balanced his penchant for universal critical thought with liberal doses of flat in praise to the appropriate individuals in aristocratic society. Fontenelle forms a link between two very widely different periods of French literature, that of Corneille, Racine and Boileau on the one hand, and that of Voltaire, D'Alembert and Diderot on the other. It is not in virtue of his great age alone that this can be said of him, he actually had much in common with the beau esprit of the 17th century, as well as with the philosophers of the 18th. But it is to the latter rather than to the former period that he properly belongs. According to Charles Augustin saint Beuf, he deserves a place dans la classe des esprits infinis and distinguis, distinguished. However, it ought to be added by intelligence rather than by intellect, and less by the power of saying much than by the power of saying the little well. There have been several collected editions of Fontenelle's works, the first being printed in in three vols, at The Hague in 1728-1729. The best is that of Paris, in eight vols, 1790. Some of his separate works have been frequently reprinted and also translated. The Pluralite des Mondes was translated into modern Greek in 1794. 
Saint Boeuf has an interesting essay on Fontenelle, with several useful references in the Causeries du Lundi volume. E. See also Villemain, Tableau de la Literature Française au X Vie Sickle, The Abbe Troublet, Memoirs pour Serveur à l'Histoire de la Vie des Ouvrages de M. de Fontenelle, A Labour de Millard, Fontenelle, in the Grand Écrivains Français series, and El Magrin, Fontenelle, L'Homme, Love, L'Influence. His dialogues of the dead show both his erudition and wit by presenting invented but plausible dialogues between dead ancients, dead moderns and a whole book devoted to dialogues between an ancient and a modern, to Montaigne asking him if some centuries had more wise men than other, Socrates answers sadly that the general order of nature seems very constant, in one of the books Roxelaine and Anne Boleyn discuss about politics and the way for a woman to decide a man to marry her, the dialogue between Montezuma and Cortes allows the the former to dismiss some myths about the wisdom in ancient Greece by quoting some counter-examples. In 1935 the lunar crater Fontenelle was named after him.